Satellite Network, this is Sky Sports. Indianapolis, motorsports racing capital, home to dozens of race teams and related manufacturing shops, and the site of the NHRA's most prestigious event, the U.S. Nationals. This race has drawn combatants from every corner of the country for the past four decades, and that tradition continues. Only 16 drivers make the field in each of the two top alcohol classes, and at the end of a long day of racing, only one from each will be at the head of the class. To put it simply, a win at the Nationals is to have beaten the best. Yeah! This is the Autolite Sportsman Challenge from the National Hot Rod Association U.S. Nationals at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Now in the 40 years of the Nationals, top alcohol categories have only been competing as separate classes in the last 13. Previously, dragsters and funny cars ran together, and in all those years, there's never been a repeat winner in the top alcohol dragster class. Well, you might call it a TAD jinx at this race. Now, there are four former U.S. Nationals alcohol dragster champions here. Rick Santos, Chuck Baird, Tom Conway, and Bill Barney. And you talk to any one of these guys, and they'll tell you they would love to see this long tradition at Indianapolis broken. But my broadcast partner, Bob Fry, is with another alcohol racer who would love to see this long-time tradition continue. Bill, I'm with Randy Parks, the driver of the number one qualified car. And, Randy, as you take a look at you, some people think the word on your shirt might describe the performance out there. Well, we've been hearing a lot about uh, fluke and people have been asking what they are and everything, but that 583 or the one, uh, that wasn't a fluke run. We set the car up to run that number and uh, we backed it up in our first round with a 587 and uh, we feel that uh, everybody knows we're serious players. Well, I guess we'd be remiss if we didn't ask you to tell us what fluke is. Well, Fluke's a leader in the electronic measurement uh, industry. Uh, they make automotive test equipment and uh, all other kinds of test equipment throughout the electronics. These guys have run extremely well here. They've had riding decals on the side of the race car, but right now they're riding at the top of the pack in top alcohol drags. If they win, it certainly won't be. Well, you get the idea. Rookie drivers have also done well over in the funny car category. And let's go for more on that story to Alan Reinhardt. Well, Bob, as a matter of fact, Randy Anderson, the reigning Winston champ, won this race in his rookie year. Now, that was two seasons ago. If you take that win by Randy, the three that his father Brad won here at Indy, the Anderson family has got four trophies. The Austins also have four trophies. Pat Austin has won this race with his alcohol car four different times. Last year, it was Tony Bartone ending up in the winner's circle here at Indy. Back in 86, Ace Manzo won this race. In 1983, 11 years ago, Vern Motes picked up his U.S. Nationals win. The key thing to remember is that this is the biggest race of the year. And no matter where you are in your career, everybody wants to win the U.S. Nationals. We told you this was the quickest field ever. Well, Randy Parks led the way. Rick Santos, Tom Conway, Daryl Russell, and Chuck Baird. Three former champs, a rookie, and a wannabe. The bump spot, by the way, a lightning quick 5.946. Herring's on one side of the ladder in the opening round. You can take a look at him right there. Parks and Powell, DeVault and Payne, Russell and Barney, Chuck Baird and Bill McCornack. Let's look at the DeVault and Payne matchup. As strong as Jay Payne runs all across the country, it is amazing that he has never won a single round at the U.S. Nationals and he's been here 10 straight years. One of the strongest runners in the first round, out of here. Speaking of out of here, Bill Barney, 90 U.S. Nationals champ, qualified number 13. Not good. Beaten in the first stanza by number four qualifier, the wannabe, 
Darrell Russell, Parks, Duvall, Russell, Baird, all advancing in to round number two. On the other side of the ladder, an upset in the first round. Not a shocking upset, not a stunning upset, but an upset nonetheless. It was number 10 qualifier Sean Hyland against number seven qualifier David Wells. And David Wells, the ice cream magnate, melts away as he gets a red light. And Sean Hyland in the near lane advances to round number two. Another upset, it was Mike Kosky and Bill Reichert. Reichert, the Division Three champion for 1994, and qualified number 11 here is the recipient of a red light by the number six qualifier, Mike Kosky. So the number 11 guy beats the number six guy, and that shows that anything can happen at the Nationals. And the first dragsters we're going to watch are driven by two guys who each have their own reason for wanting to win this race. I guess Randy Parks being the rookie would love to have that kind of a start to his top alcohol dragster driving career. And Don DeVault, a longtime racer that's never won the Nationals. Don DeVault's been doing this for a while, and he has seen a lot of big names come and go and fall a little bit short here at the U.S. Nationals. He is driving that Wolverine blue racer car on the far side of the track. DeVault, out of the Midwest, qualified in the eighth slot, ran a 592, and that's stunning upset over Jay Payne in the opening round. And Parks over John Powell. Randy Parks came in, the number one qualifier, and kept that pace up, as you mentioned, with an 87 in the opening round. It was indeed a surprise to many to see Randy Parks qualifying number one. I mean, the point is going to be made over and over again that the car that he's driving is the same car that Blaine Johnson took to the top alcohol dragster championship last year, but that's not the same setup. No, make no mistake about it as we take a look at Don DeVault settling in, finished second in the division three points last year. So this is certainly not an easy guy to get around, but the Parks team has completely taken and reconfigured this race car. This is their own setup. They've got the crew chief out of the Darrell Hitchman team working with them right now. And it has been a picture of consistency all weekend long. Both cars slowly moving up now. They'll light the pre-stage bulb, the stage bulb, to bring up their RPMs. They'll each get three amber lights, then the green four tenths of a second later, and they'll be racing. Wheels up for Parks in the near lane. A little bit of shake in the far lane on Don DeVall's car. And Randy Parks has somewhat of an easy trip down the quarter mile. A 585, 234 miles an hour. Very strong run. You're tempted to use that word fluke every time you see him do that. He came out with an 87 in the opening round and 85 right here. Randy Parks and that team, those guys are for real. As the next pair comes up on the far side, Chuck Baird, we just saw some big tire shake out of Don DeVault's car over in that far side of the race course. Chuck Baird makes a lot of power. It'll be interesting to see if he can get down the track. Alan? Randy, if the day ended right now, it's been your best day ever in alcohol for Dragster. I'll agree with you on that point. Boy, we've been running faster than we've ever run before. And just looking at that ladder and looking at all those names and you know, a few years ago, just thinking about me playing with those guys out there in top alcohol dragster was just a dream. Now it's real. Number one qualifier the fastest alcohol field in history. Can't be prouder than that. Looked like the front end was up. You get a little nervous down there? This car likes that. You know, it really, uh, really goes when that front end's up about a foot, two foot in the air. Carries them out there and, uh, hey, the fluke car is flying. Randy sounded like he wrote the opening to our show there. <laughs> just playing with these guys. Rookie out there, quickest car ever. This will be interesting. The wild side car of Chuck Baird, a former champion here at this race, two years back, won it in his rookie season. Knows exactly what Randy Parks is going through. He still has title hopes, but a very important race for him. Darrell Russell, the Texas kid, went down to Atlanta earlier this year and dominated the field. Number one qualifier, low ET. He's gonna give Chucky all he can handle. Bang, both cars out together. Look at this! Wow, Chuck Baird barely gets around. Darrell Russell, 591 at 238. Russell with a 594 at 234. Wow. And Chuck Baird really wants to win this drag race. He just missed winning the divisional championship a couple of weeks ago. Chuck, he headed to the semis. And uh, tell me about this repeat winner jinx this place has. Does that, do you think about that at all? No. No, I haven't. Uh... I'm not smart enough to think that far ahead of time, you know. I just go one round at a time and hope I get that far. You're going to have to take on the low qualifier in the next round, and he's got lane choice. That ain't going to be easy. Who's that? Randy Parks. Oh, yeah? Hmm. I guess we'll just have to wait and see how it all comes out. Doesn't look too worried, does he? That is the car of Tom Conway, 
a fellow who has won here at the U.S. Nationals way back in 1989, and you know he would love to do it again. His opponent in this round will be Bill Reichert, a guy who just a couple of weeks ago, as I mentioned, won the Division Three Championship, beating Chucky Baird by a handful of points, and Tom Conway, the number three qualifier, with kind of a scary incident in round one, Bob. Conway was slowing down at the end of the racetrack. His chutes never both fully deployed may have gained up a little bit of speed at the top end of the racetrack and you can look at the left front wheel there it is the pilot chute from keith stark's machine gets caught up in the front end of tom's car did a little bit of damage to the wheel and the front stabilizer wing on the front end of that race car well as both guys get ready now for this round two matchup the weather conditions here in indianapolis have been ever changing we've had a little bit of sun but right now it is overcast it's a little bit on the damp side and that could have an effect on how well these cars hook up on the racetrack. Weather does play a big factor in all the racing, not only how you set the race car, what it does to the racetrack, and you never can tell, especially the way the weather's been here in Indianapolis over this long Labor Day weekend. The Bars Leagues machine on the far lane, Division Three champ, tough matchup with Tom Conway. Tom Conway makes it look almost a little too easy, a 583. 237 and Bob it looks as if there's a lot of parity in the ETs with these guys at least on the winner's side of the ladder you can't beat Conway with a 583 when you're running a 613 and that's what Bill Reichert put up on the scoreboard right there the high royal machine coming off a very strong west coast swing gonna get a challenge here's a little Chevrolet the defending champion Rick Santos and the SNS automotive car 1993 top alcohol dragster champion. The far end of the race course, here's Al and Tom. All right, Tom, let's talk weather conditions. Today on race day is 100% different than anything we've seen all weekend. Uh, it's pretty humid, isn't it? How many changes do you make in a car? I didn't change a thing. Not even the peel. Still went 583. You know, that guy looks almost too relaxed. I wonder about him sometimes. He talked about the pill, like, Take two and call me in the morning when you got <laughs> Conway in the other lane. Rick Santos coming off a very strong performance out there. He dominated the West Coast Winston Drag Racing Series events. Sean Hyland about the only guy that's been able to give him a shot so far this year. The wedge motor in the high royal car from out in Oregon and the small block Chevrolet, one of the big hitters down the tube right here. Listen to those engines come up. Away they go. Wow, another very close race. Rick Santos, the winner this time, 582, 229. Everybody's rolling, similar numbers, Bob. You got a feel for Sean Hyland. The kid went 586, almost 234, and he's out of here. Chuck Baird and Randy Parks, one side of the ladder. Conway and Rick Santos, what a magnificent final four we got coming up. Well, Rick, in your quest for the Winston Championship, you're gonna have a serious customer in the next round with Conway. Oh, that's no doubt. He's one of the toughest there is. And we're just uh, do our thing and maybe things will turn out right. You've got lane choice by a hundredth of a second, but it doesn't look like there's a lot of difference on the track. No, probably not. Everybody's running pretty good in both lanes, so we'll probably just stick in this lane just because we've been here and he hasn't. Three of our four semifinalists have won this race. Guy is on his game, isn't he? We'll be taking a look at Top Alcohol Funny Cars, past and present, next on the Autolite Sportsman Challenge continues. We're back on the Autolite Sportsman Challenge from Indianapolis Raceway Park and the 40th Annual U.S. Nationals. Kind of a muggy, overcast day here in Indy. And we're getting ready for round two of Top Alcohol Funny Car. That is the car of Vern Motes, the number six qualifier, but let's bring you up to date on the top five qualifiers in TAFC this weekend. Number one qualifier, the current Winston champion, Randy Anderson. Then it's Tony Bartone. Larry Miner, known better as a car owner than a driver. Frank Manzo, number four, and Lou Gasparelli, number five. In round one, yeah, we had a surprise or two. Jerry Gully on the far side of the race course against Larry Miner. This is not Larry Miner of Cruz Pedregon, Corey McClanathan top fuel funny car fame. Different Larry Miner. Same name, different guy. Go with me on this. <laughs> All kinds of problems as Jerry Gully goes sailing on down the Atlas Waste Oil Machine. 617, 226. Yo, Jer. Hang on. He did for the win, and he will take on Vern Motes in the next round. On the far side of the racetrack, watch Bob Gottschalk. 
former U.S. Nationals champion, former Winston champion, former funny car driver. Red light start. Gee, you're out, Bob. Whoop, over the center line. You're out again, Bob. What's that mean? He fouled twice in one run. He's got to pay us to get out of the place? Slagle advances with the DuPont machine. He will meet up with Tony Bartone in round number two. Pat Austin's had a shaky year. That's a new race car in the near lane. He wrecked his previous race car at the Spring Nationals. Tim Wilkerson in the far lane loses to Pat Austin. That's the first round that Pat Austin has won since winning the Gainesville Gator Nationals. Pat, it's been a while since you've had a smile on your face when we've been talking at this end of the racetrack. You knew you'd turn it around here at Indy. This place been good to you. Well, it's always been a real good, good place for us to come race, but uh, we need to step it up. We've got a serious governor on this thing, but just getting past the rounds gives you another chance. So that's the only good coming out of for the Castrol, Syntec, Dynamax, Red Wing, Shoes, Oldsmobile. We're going in the second round. It's good when you've got a serious governor. You've got to take something serious in life. Anderson and Austin Manzo and Gasparelli in round number two. Activity. Here comes Jerry Gully again, the Atlanta Waste Oil Management Machine. Out of Kingsport, Tennessee, the Tri-Cities of Bristol, Kingsport, Johnson City. You're going to love this weather. Vern Motes, who has done it all in the sport of NHRA Winston Championship drag racing. Kendall sponsorship now for about 10 or 70 years. He and teammate Bob Massey have been in top 10 at NHRA Winston points for a number of years. Gully looking to go to the semifinals. But he won't. Tire smoke from Jerry Gully. Near lane, Vern Motes has the win with a 596 at 235. Excellent pass for Vern. 596 compared to his opening round. 605. He continues to step up. The competition continues to step out. Here comes Tim Slagle and Tony Bartone. This is the DuPont Automotive Finishers Machine. Gorgeous automobile. Best appearing crew at one of the NHRA Winston Championship events earlier. And the Torco MPZ New Look Pontiac of Tony Bartone, former U.S. Nationals champion. We've mentioned it on previous telecasts, but it bears repeating Tony Bartone has probably the most skilled crew chief in top alcohol racing, Steve Boggs, who also crews for Joe Penland out of Texas. But whenever Tony comes to the line, you got to feel he has an advantage. Let's go to Allen. He's with Vern Motes. Fern, you must like this overcast, cool weather. 596? Oh, that's pretty good for us. Uh, we changed the motor quite a bit. We broke a wrist pin earlier in the weekend and ruined the one old dependable motor we had, so we had to put in a spare. So we're kind of happy it ran that good. The conditions are so much different today. How much do you adjust? We did quite a bit of adjusting. I don't know how much other people are doing, but we're really humid out here. I mean, we're 100%. Uh, on the barometer and temperature 60 was like 62 or 3, which is not bad, but the humidity really makes a difference. Looks like it may be working in Vern's favor. We should mention when you talk about Tony Bartone, as we take a look at Tim Slagle's car, Bartone with Steve Boggs, the crew chief, also crewing for Joe Penland. Penland came out earlier this weekend, had some real bad tire shake, hit the wall, lost the body on the car, and it's out for the weekend. In the dragster category, a lot of tire shape that we saw it took some of the competitors out. The shorter wheelbase funny cars, changing weather conditions. Bill, I think it's something we should watch, especially for the cars on the far side of the racetrack where Tim Slagle is. When the conditions on the racetrack are not ideal, you're more likely to see problems in the shorter wheelbase cars, like the funny cars versus the dragster. So yeah, Bob, this is going to be a case of who has the best feel for this racetrack in getting the car down there without any tire shake, any problems at all. You can see how soupy it is out there. Photographers with jackets on, not exactly Chamber of Commerce weather here, but everybody's playing from the same deck. It's the crew chief and the driver that can make that adjustment better than the other guy that's gonna stay alive. Bartone, right of your screen. Tim Slagle, are away. Bump and grind, shake, rattle, roll. The Tony Bartone finally gets the handle on the car and runs a 608 at 237. Pretty good work under the circumstances. Not gonna be good enough to give him lane choice, and I don't think that Tony Bartone's gonna be happy with this. Watching the far lane, as we were just talking about the tire shake, Tim Slagle off the starting line, turns it toward the center line, tries to correct, bangs the header on the ground. That's the sparks you see coming out underneath the race car, and Tony Bartone wins it and goes to the semifinals. You know, Tony, last year you tiptoed through this field and got into the winner's circle, but 6-0s ain't going to cut it. 
Well, you know, up until that lap, we were running pretty strong. Uh, we shook the tires uh, probably in the, uh, not probably, but in the top of first gear. I pedaled it, put it in second, and uh, was lucky enough to take the win. You know, we're not happy with that kind of performance. So uh, we'll go back and we'll work on the tune-up. Vern really stepped up. You're going to have to be on your game. Well, uh, you know, we were surprised that the car shook the tires. Uh, we thought we had it a little soft, and uh, I guess the racetrack wasn't as good as we thought it was, and we're going to have to be careful for the next lap. Bartone with only one national event win this year. He'd love to make it two this weekend. Bob, he's in the pits. On one of our previous shows on the Autolite Sportsman Challenge, we told you about the NHRA contingency program. Basically how it works is if you're running the company's product in the car and you have their decal on the car and you're fortunate enough to win, that company will pay you a bonus. It's called a contingency award. At Indianapolis this year for the 40th running of the U.S. Nationals, we found this car in the pits. Now, if these guys happen to win, the folks in Waterlight will pay them a bonus money for winning in Top Fuel Barbecue. Believe me, this baby really cooks. Hey, that car has a nice grill. It's more smoke than I saw from that barbecue grill over there in the pit area. The strange thing about that grill, by the way, the guy also has a twin-engine one. If you're having, like, a lot of friends <laughs> over. Hey, people come to Indy and just have a great time. Lou Gasparelli and the Dodge Machine out of West Covina, California. A couple of national event wins to his credit. Very tough opponent in Frank Ace Manzo. As they get set, Manzo in the opening round, 6.05. Gasparelli ran 5.94. The Kendall GT1, Lou Bramatic, Dodge Machine. John Glade, the crew chief, who has been with Frank since back in the 1970s. Frank Manzo is considered to be one of the big four in top alcohol funny car racing. You've got your Randy Andersons, Bob Newberry's, Tony Bartones, and your Frank Manzos. Always around at the end of the race, usually when the car is running up to task. I'm telling Pat Austin that you didn't make it a big five. <laughs> You're in big trouble. Not this year. Gasparelli in the near lane is going to need to be picture perfect, but Manzo, who brings this car up to real high RPM on the starting line, Running in that lane that has given a lot of the cars problems. If Manzo can't get it off the starting line, Lou Gasparelli can take him out right here. Listen to those engines come up to five, six, seven thousand RPM. Oh, bouncing and shaking again. Ho oh, ho! Gasparelli gets his chute open. Manzo finally gets to the finish line. For a minute there, it looked like neither car would do it. 706, 224. Bob, this is getting ugly. How about that? Lou Gasparelli had Frank Manzo right where he wanted him. Again, far side of the track. The Kendall GT1 car off the starting line, just like Tim Slagle. Make a left, Frank. Straighten it out, Frank. And he was history. Toast. Done. Gone. And look at this. Lou's parachute comes out. Tough to make forward progress when the laundry's hanging out behind the race car. Frank Manzo and Allen. Lucky, lucky, lucky. I always said I'd rather be lucky than powerful any day. And every now and then you need one of them uh, to win, especially, you know, here at this race. I think there's a lot of added tension and people don't realize, I think you step on your cars a little harder than what you really think. And uh, so far today, we'll see. Had you given up until you saw his chute fall out? Uh, I was heading to the center line and I had shut the car off that uh, I knew I was getting too close to the line and I didn't want to do any damage to anybody. And I just kept an eye on him and I saw the shoots come out and I stepped back in it, yes. After all that, we got a yes? <laughs> Lou Gasparella has got to be beside himself at the far end of the racetrack as Pat Austin and the Castrol car gets set to match up with the reigning Winston champion Randy Anderson. May not have been a great year for Pat Austin, but maybe he can get a little bit lucky like Frank Manzer did right there. Let's go to the end of the racetrack. Alan Reinhardt standing by with a disconsolate Lou Gasparelli. I saw the chute come out. Was it shaking real bad or did you do that? Well, no, I didn't hit the parachute, but I still think it broke the rear end and then it shook or some kind of a sequence in there and then the chute came out. I mean, it just, it happened too quick. Boy, you can see Disappointment written all over his face. Lou Gasparelli had the big guy right where he wanted him. The Castrol Syntax Red Wing Shoes Machine, Pat Austin, there's his dad walled out front. New look race car, new combinations. Let's get more on that with Alan. Pat Austin debuted a brand new race car back in Sonoma, California. Had a lot of engineering changes in it. Two-speed transmission, everything was different. 
Well, the car didn't work out quite as hoped, so Pat's gone a little bit back to basics. They're back to the three-speed, but one of the biggest changes is the Whipple Charger that the Austins pioneered a couple of years ago, at least for now, is gone. They're back to the SSI root-style supercharger and the regular scoop. Remember the one on the Whipple, kind of cut in half, offset to one side because Pat couldn't see around it? The problem with the old car was that it wasn't consistent. It would run some good numbers, but just wouldn't always go down the track. What the Austins are looking for right here with this car is a little bit more consistency that could give them that fifth win here at Indianapolis. Consistency, a major problem for the Austins so far this season. Look at that, Randy Anderson in and staged already before Pat Austin even gets his car up into the free stage speed. But Randy Anderson flies down the quarter mile and beats Pat Austin with a 595, 239 miles an hour. Very hefty numbers. Not bad, but Randy again having a little problem getting that car off the starting line. Could be his undoing. Vern Moltz and Tony Bartone. It'll be Randy Anderson against Frank Ace Manzo. Great matchups coming up. Randy, by the look on your face, you are obviously not happy with that run. Well, it shook hard, and I just did a bad job of driving. You know, uh, Dad's been working with me, staging the car differently, uh, working with Roy Hill, and the idea is to pre-stage real deep so I don't have to move far to stage. And I purposely pre-staged deep, and, you know, the car was pre-staged, and, you know, I guess the shaking or whatever, next thing I know, the stage light's on, and I think you'll see the car never really moved. And, just a little too deep. I'm going to have to be a little more careful. Let's look forward. How about you and your old buddy Manzo next round? Yeah, that's going to be quite a race. Uh, conditions have changed dramatically. You know, it's not the same as when we were running 82s and 3s and 4s all day. Um, it's going to be a drag race. Uh, hopefully we can detune a little bit and run a 90. I think that'll do it. Hey, I think a 595 on a shaky racetrack is pretty darn good myself. Coming up, final four in drag street. Welcome back to the Autolite Sportsman Challenge. That is Tony Bartone leaning on the engine in his top alcohol funny car. We'll be seeing him in semifinal action very shortly. He's sitting there thinking, I can't believe these guys won't let me work on my own car. <laughs> He's getting a tad on the dark side here, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, indeed. And we were talking about track conditions earlier. And you can imagine how darkness, the lack of sunshine, and the coolness of the evening will affect the conditions here on the racetrack. Chuck Baird. And Randy Parks. Randy, the only one of the final four that has never won this race, but he's going to really have to do his best here against Chuck Baird. He's never gotten to the semifinals. Here's a car that hadn't been past the second round until this race. Talking about Randy Parks' machine. I think when he gets up to the starting line, biggest race ever, huge crowd, under the lights, I think the tension on the starting line might be a little bit too much for him here, to be honest with you, Bill. Chuck Baird's car, awesome power, big top end speed, can run with the best of them, and I think that Randy Parks may be in a bit over his head right here. And Chuck Baird, highly motivated to win this race. We spoke to him after he lost the divisional title to Bill Reichert a couple of weeks ago in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and he said, well, we can still win the Nationals. And indeed, he is in a position to do that as we speak. Parks ran an 85 in the last round. Baird a 91. Parks looking to go wire to wire. Number one qualifier, lower ET last round than Chuck Baird experienced could be the big difference right here. You see the pre-stage bulb at the top of the Christmas tree, meaning eight more inches until the stage bulb lights, meaning the car is ready to race. Very deliberate staging procedure here. Night racing at Indianapolis. Very exciting for the fans. We don't get to see night racing too much on the Autolite Sportsman Channel. Wow! Yes! Randy Parks with a great job of putting Chuck Baird on the trailer, 586 and 236. I'll tell you, the dream weekend continues for the Parks gang. Like I said right before they ran, not a doubt in my mind that Randy Parks could handle them. Look at this, little wheels up charge for the fluke machine. He runs a 586, Chuck Baird 588, and let's give credit where credit's due. Randy Parks was also first off the starting line. Way to go, Randy. Randy, are you believing this? The final at Indy. Wow, that's really something. I got to thank all the guys in NHRA. They've been pulling for us. Uh, Ron Cook, Red, Pinky, all the guys, Frank. And uh, I just can't believe we're here. It's all due to the help from Ryden Deco to get me started, the help from Fluke Incorporation from giving us the parts to run hard and run fast. That's the uh, third time I've run Chuck Baird. He's one of the best. He's beaten me both uh, times previous until now. 
Are you aware of the fact that nobody has ever won this race twice in an alcohol dragster? I understand that, and I think that uh, if that uh, holds true, we're looking in pretty good shape, because I think Rick won it last year. Rick won it last year. Conway run it, won it a few years ago. Let's find out who his opponent is. Let me tell you something else about people that have won this race. Brian Raymer in 81, Darrell Gwynn in 83, Bill Walsh in 85, Conway 89, Blaine Johnson 91, all won this race and also won Winston Championships in that same year. This is a very important race, especially for the Purple Gang, the SNS small block machine against Tom Conway. For every interview you get to do with Randy Parks, you've also got to talk to Chuck Bear. Chuck, that was a good old-fashioned drag race. You just came up a little bit on the short end. Yeah, it's kind of all weekend. We've been having some problems, and I don't know what the electrical problem's been. We went up there to run that run there and turned the car on, didn't have no tachometer, no lights, no nothing. I just had to run by the seat of my pants, and I didn't want to overwind it. So I... Your whole season's been kind of up and down. Yeah, it's been pretty much a yo-yo deal. Yeah, you have to feel for Chuck Baird, leading in the divisional points through much of the season, lost that championship to Bill Reichert, and he just had a big bite taken out of his Winston Championship hopes. Conway and Santos, Santos in the near lane all over the racetrack, as Tom Conway moves on with the victory. 6.09, 224 miles an hour. Mention the Winston Championship, Bob. These two guys still have a shot at it. Rick Santos in the near lane, one of the few cars on that side of the track to shake the tires. It's a very lightweight machine, reacts differently than almost any other car in the field. Alan? Tom Conway headed back into the final here at Indy against a guy that you're not that familiar with. How do you prepare for something like this? Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to race the racetrack, I guess, not him. What's wrong with the car? Why are you laying on the ground playing with it? Oh, I had a little cable come loose, a chute cable. It came out, but it, I had to put it back in. Pull the chute, all right, no problem. Well, that won't be any problem to fix before the next round. You're just going to go out and stand on it? Uh, I'm going to back it up a little bit. Might be a wise move on this racetrack. Go figure. Tom Conway and Randy Parks, the finalist in top alcohol dragster at the biggest race of them all, the 40th running of the NHRA U.S. Nationals. Over the years, Tom Conway has helped out dozens of racers in the top alcohol dragster category, and they're either all over here now looking for advice or trying to lend a little bit of moral assistance. As Tom Conway tries to become the first driver in 13 years to win two top alcohol dragster titles. Now, if many hands make light work, this should be a mismatch in the final. Randy Parks looking for his first ever, and Tom Conway trying to do it for the second time. Should be some final round. Well, the nickname I coined for Tom Conway is Yoda. You ask any one of those guys there helping Tom, and they'll tell you he is the grand master of top alcohol dragster racing. Did you see that? Jay Payne, Sam Shockley, the crew chief of the Pie Royal car, Rick Santos, Chuck Baird, and, of course, Tom's wife, Linda, all down there. That's some brain trust. And at the starting line now, it's semifinal action top alcohol. Funny car, that is the car of Tony Bartone be taking on Vern Motes. Tony, one national event win so far this season, and of course, the defending U.S. Nationals champion. Has not been a dominant Tony Bartone type of weekend. Struggled in qualifying, finally wound up in the number two slot, but is down almost a tenth of a second with his Torco MPZ machine out of Long Island to this guy. Look at the condensation on the supercharger there. Starting to get a bit on the cool side. Vern Motes has come close to winning a national event this season, going to the finals in Memphis against Randy Anderson, the champ, and losing. Tony Bartone, as I mentioned, one national event victory and may win the divisional championship this year in Division II. Clean start for both cars. Motes is out on Bartone. Look at this. Got him. Vern Motes pulls off, I would call an upset. 599, 232 over Tony Bartone, the number six qualifier, boots out the number two guy. How about that Vern Motes? He didn't back into it either. He just flat out ran the former U.S. Nationals champion. Big time win for Vern Motes. Randy Anderson, the slick 50 car. Frank Manzo, the Kendall GT1 Lubramatic Special. They're up next. Alan? Vern, 13 years ago you did this. Is this like deja vu? No, I don't think so. It's harder all the time. 599, the car's got some consistency now, and it's quicker. Well, we hope we can do any good in the final. Randy's been tough on us this year. He picked Randy. Let's see if Randy can indeed beat the ace. Tell you what an interesting sport this is. There's Brad Anderson, father of Randy Anderson. 
There's Frank Manzo. Manzo in 1981, when he won his Winston Championship, had to go all the way to California to try to stop a guy named Gary Southern. If Gary Southern won the race, Manzo would not win the championship. Brad Anderson beat Gary Southern in the final to give Frank Manzo the Winston Championship. Now his son Brad's going to see what he can do for the Kendall GT1 Lubramatic Special. Randy Anderson, his real problem, getting this car off the starting line. There's not a car that can run with him on an ET at mile per hour basis. If he gets it off the line, Frank's in trouble. Whoa, showtime for Randy Anderson in the near lane while Frank Manzo will go to the finals. 601, 236 miles an hour, the ace is back. And on the replay, exactly what we were talking about, Randy Anderson's car right off the starting line. Veers toward the wall. That's a close encounter of the worst kind. He is already out of it. Frank Manzo goes to the finals against Vern Bose. Hey, Frankie, you know, I think Vern might be a little disappointed. He just told me that he was going to have to race Randy in the final. Well, uh, I was kind of thinking that a little bit, and we went for it big time. Uh, made some major changes in the bow housing, and it was probably very minute adjustment of making it. Really running good. We're going to get this Kendall GT1. Mopar performance here. Maybe we'll put it in the winner's circle today. Now, you told me you win this race. You're going to do the interview standing on your head. I will. Standing on my head, you give me the microphone, I'll do a full interview. There you have it, Bill. Well, we'll all be waiting to see if Frank is a man of his word. He'll be racing Vern Motes, final of Top Alcohol Funny Car here at the U.S. Nationals. There's a look at the Randy Parks pit area. It's he and Conway in the finals of the Alcohol Dragster. That's coming up next. Stick around. Look at this. Racing under the lights. Looks like a Saturday night at your local bracket track on the NHRA Winston Drag Racing Trail. That is, if your track's got about 100 grand worth of Musco lighting system, might as well give those guys a plug. They helped us finish this thing under the lights. This is Sportsman Activity. Super gas. Brian Merkel on the far lane. Iggy Boychesco in the near lane. Merkel, former TRW All-Star champ. Iggy, school teacher, football coach, Philadelphia, winner. And he's won one in at least every year here in the 1990s. Way to go, Eggman. This is Stock Eliminator Championship. It's the Emmons boys. This is Jerry Emmons to the near side, the High Royal car. Gary Bowers, longtime runner and another school teacher, Enon, Ohio. But the winner, the Pie Royal car, the Emmons boys go crazy. Well, I tell you what, this feels great, man. My, my dad's up there in the stands. My brother's at home watching TV, if this is on live or whatever. But Speedy, my oldest brother, gave me a, a heck of a car, and here I am, man. Woo! Hey, try to happy up a bit, boys. Here comes the Slick 50 team car. This is the Winston champ, Scotty. Unbelievable Richardson, near lane, out of Wendy's. Where's Dave when you need him? This is Gary. I've never won a race before. Stin it. And all you got to do here to win is beat the Winston champ. The best they come. Two cars dead even off the starting line in Super Comp, and we have a winner. Gary, you beat the Winston champ, the hottest guy in the country, and won the U.S. National. It's the greatest day of my life. It's uh, a lot of luck, and just had to get in the zone and drive right. And finally put it all together and with all the luck I had today it just made it work. Here comes Don McCallum for all the Canadian fans from Van Leek Hill, Ontario. Here's a guy didn't even win his class. The mighty Superstock A automatic car qualified based on performances and wins the U.S. National. In comp eliminator it's David Billingsley in the full-bodied Oldsmobile Cutlass against Mike Trumbull out of Pasadena, Texas. Handicap eliminator start Advantage, Trumbull out of the box, Trumbull at half track, Trumbull at 1,000 feet, but where it counts, David Billingsley, big time win at 822. Time now for the premier race in sportsman racing, the final round of top alcohol dragster, that's the car of Randy Parks, the number one qualifier, taking on Tom Conway. Youth versus experience, happens a lot in drag racing, what'll happen this time? Never a winner on the national event tour. Randy Parks, the fluke team. Tom Conway, 89 Winston champ, former U.S. Nationals champ. This guy has done it all. But I'll tell you what, after I saw what Randy Parks did against Chuck Beard in that earlier round, hey, anything can happen right here. We're only seconds away. Watch the four yellow bulbs at the top of the tree when they're all lit. It's race time. Whoa, problems for Conway. 
away in the far lane. Look at Randy Parks. He's going to win the U.S. Nationals. Randy Parks Conway, 587 at 234. Wow, 587. Some run. <laughs> Randy Parks with a forward one and a half off the top of the car. And why not? He's the 1994 U.S. Nationals champion. And that was a forward one and a half. The degree of difficulty in beating Tom Conway is probably unlike anything Randy Parks has faced. Look at the wheelie bar swinging around behind Tom Conway. Never did get a good bite on the track. Well, I guess that cool as a cucumber thing from last round is about gone now, huh? Well, you know, a final round is new to me. You know, I did a lot of those in Super Comp. I have a lot of experience at. Just my first one in alcohol dragster. And the biggest race of the year, you won the U.S. National. Yeah, I did. It was a great race, great competitors. I got to give credit to my crew chief, Rob Wendland. He got us off the port so we could run with the big dogs. Eric Cleveland, Brian Render, all our volunteers, Randy and Beth Etheridge, Randy Westfall, they helped us early in the year, get everything started. Got to thank my sponsors, Riding Decal, started everything. Fluke stepped up, gave us the parts we needed to run hard. Because of all those group effort, that's what got us into the winner's circle. I'd like to dedicate this race to a little girl, Kristen Torstevite, six years old. She was tragically killed in a boating accident. Daughter of a alcohol dragster competitor, Dr. Jeremy Torstevite. Just wanna say, Jerry, I know, if I can win this race, I know that your little girl is sleeping in the arms of Jesus. In Dragster, we saw a Cinderella finish, maybe even a Snow White and Sleeping Beauty finish, as Randy Parks did the unlikely. What would it mean for Vern Motes to beat Frank Manzo for the U.S. Nationals Championship this year? Vern Motes is a guy that's coming back after having had open heart surgery a couple of years ago. He really now has come full circle. To win this would be the culmination, I think, of what has been a brilliant drag racing career for Vern Motes. Manzo, the two-time Winston champion, has won the Fram Southern Nationals this year in Atlanta, and the Rockingham race would love the hat trick here in Indy. Whoa, look at Motes toward the center line. Bang, something goes in the race car, and Manzo will win the 1994 U.S. Nationals with a 603 at 236 miles an hour. You got a feel for Vern Moe, 6.03, not an awe-inspiring time by Manzo, but watch the car in the near lane, just like Randy Anderson before him, out of shape right off the starting line, heading down at about half track, smoke out of the car, and then the supercharger lets go. Come on, you promised me. Now you're going to back out? No, you got to hold me up, though. I'll hold you up. You get on your head. You know I can't do it. It's an unbelievable weekend. I... This Kendall GT1 Mopar performance was unbelievable. We just kept in there punching. We made an unbelievable run the first run, and from then on, we were totally lost. I don't know what it ran in the final. It 603. It did. Wow. And something must have happened to Vern. It shook really hard again in the final, and I think just that this was our weekend. There's not much more I can say about it. We just kept in there plugging and kept taking the breaks and taking advantage of them. Here we are late at night. I don't think anybody thought we'd even run today. And NHRA and Steve Gibbs and all them guys, he did one heck of a job. If you don't stand on your head for us, I may never interview you again. Come on. You gotta help me. I'll, I'll help you. Help you. I'll help you. Somebody help him. Right. Hey, Frank. This weekend.